Hello viewers, it's Super GT here. Welcome to some Forza Motorsport 7 gameplay. So this is exclusive gameplay. I managed to go to an Xbox showcase event uh, recently in London and we had some time to play the game, about 45 minutes. And this is one of the things I ended up doing. So unbeatable difficulty. Uh, you can see some of the settings we're going for here. We have chosen the full GT Le Mans and we're going to be driving around Suzuka. So very good to see Suzuka back in the series, of course. And um, we're going to give it a go in the full GT Le Mans, which is, well, which was a DLC car in Forza 6, but it's going to be in, uh, in the game from launch, which is good to see. So changing a couple of settings in the loading screen, that's quite good actually that you can do that, change a couple of things whilst the game is loading. And here we are then, Suzuka Circuit, absolute classic from Forza Motorsport 4 and 3 I believe, maybe even 2 as well. So here we go then, for GT Le Mans, we are up against other cars in the Forza GT division in the game. So many of these cars you'll be familiar with because they don't seem to have really updated the list of GT cars, not, not too much anyway. I mean, the only new GT3 car really is the Bentley. At launch, anyway, we can hope for some new ones in DLC. Now, the first thing you might notice from the gameplay is the swinging camera. So, as you go around these S's, you can see that you see the side of the car as I turn, uh, which is definitely something to get used to in this game. Um, you can't turn that off. You can't change it. You can turn off the uh, motion camera, which I have turned off here. So you can't really see the screen shaking and the HUD shaking. That is very distracting, I turn that off straight away. So, a couple of settings can be changed of course. So coming through the Degna corners, I'm going to go for a lunge into Degna 2, make contact with the McLaren but he's going to get away here. Now this is against unbeatable AI and on Forza 6, unbeatable AI, well it wasn't really unbeatable. I, I found it okay, perhaps the guy in the lead often was really unbeatable. Uh, sometimes anyway, sometimes you could beat them quite easily. Didn't matter too much because you only really had to get to the top three in that in that game, Forza 6. It's a little bit different in this one where there's championship points, etc. So maybe consistency is more important. But unbeatable AI, perhaps it might live up to its name here because you, what you're going to see here, coming up the back straight, uh, by the way, I will just commentate this lap and then we'll leave it for a lap or two and then uh, I can let you just enjoy the gameplay on its own. So you can see here, the, the other guy's just got a massive run on me, and there was nothing I could do. It's not like I didn't have any damage, and I was pressing the, the acceleration all the way. Didn't miss any gear shifts. So really not sure what, exactly what was going on there. Hopefully that's not Turn 10's way of just making unbeatable AI unbeatable, just by making them ridiculously fast in the line. But anyway, that's lap one done. What we're going to do here, I'm just going to change the assist. You can have a look at the assist I've got there, if you just pause the screen. So I just changed it to manual with clutch because I was just wondering why the hell I was going so slow. But anyway, I'm going to let you enjoy this lap without me uh, commentating over the top.
So very quickly you might see there, uh, I'm going to commentate just before the end of the lap, just on that pause screen there you would have seen that the AI between, sorry the PI between all of the cars is pretty much the same. In Forza 6 this car was 860 PI, these other cars I'm racing were around about 820. So this might be evidence of the homologation system in the game which tries to make the, get, uh, the, the cars within the class more even which is good for overall racing but the, I'm still not understanding perhaps there's um, ba a balance of performance kind of, kind of thing in the, uh, going on um, because my car is clearly clearly um, deficient on the straights as you can see multiple times I'm just getting done on the straights and I really can't explain why but another thing I was going to talk about is the HUD um, it does look a little bit different but it's, it's showing the same things as what Forza 6 was showing so on the left hand side in the center we have the, the distance indicators to the guys ahead and behind. As we come through here the guy is off, the Ferrari is off the track. So we're going to gain one place. I was gaining on the AI through the two Degna corners. Around the, uh, around the rest of the track I was really struggling. I think I was racing quite well. I wasn't really particularly slow and this is unbeatable AI but I just couldn't really make any inroads on the guys ahead. So this is about as well as I was doing. Through the chicane, it's really hard to judge the traction control because because of the camera, I think. It's actually really hard to judge um, how much angle the car is steering because the camera moves it at the same time. So I am playing here with no assists. Um, traction control is off, ABS is off, stability management is off, uh, manual with clutch is on. So I'm going in the deep end here, basically. Uh, so the hard yeah, is pretty much the same, you can see on the bottom right there um, you've got the throttle and the brake, the little blue line has to go for a very aggressive block just to see what happens, they do just slow down. So you've got the blue line denoting the accelerator, a red line comes up when they brake. Um, at the bottom they're not flashing because they, the assists aren't on but the assists will flash up at the bottom of that hard there. And then just above the number for my speed there's a little white bar going across and that is the fuel. So it's all there, pretty much, the HUD's pretty much all the same. The handling does feel different, the, the camera is the thing to get used to, so that will take getting used to definitely. But overall, good, uh, good impression so far. The game looks spectacular. I was playing this in 4K. It's, this quality that you're seeing isn't 4K, but I was playing in 4K and it does look absolutely amazing. So for those of you who are going to get it on the Xbox One X, you are in for some very nice visuals at least. So just going to complete the race here. Three laps at Suzuka. I do hope you enjoyed this one. We're going to have a look at the replay features. And again, these haven't changed too much. I mean, the game, in many ways, it doesn't look hugely different to Forza 6. I mean, the, the graphics are better, yes, but uh, the, the features aren't too different. The replay cameras available very much the same you can see the menus it is a good thing that you just see there you do get a, a viewpoint without the hands on the wheel so that, that's a positive development so but I will try to play this game with a wheel eventually and see how it goes and a bit of telemetry for you but that's going to be the end of this video guys I do hope you enjoyed it I've got plenty of videos coming do check out the channel now because there's plenty of four or six videos on there uh, so basically all the stuff I managed to record in that 45 minute session so plenty of videos on the channel right now so do check them out, do subscribe if you'd like to see more like this, thank you for watching guys I'll see you next time, goodbye